Hey y'all, this is the second video in my series of how to convert from an SKP file to a DXF file. Now in this video, what we'll do is we'll actually go onto the 3D warehouse, download a simple sh shelf project, and then convert that file for use in vCarve Pro. So, stick around. Okay, with our extensions downloaded and installed, we're ready to get into SketchUp and go find us a model on the 3D Warehouse. Now, there's a couple ways of getting there, depending upon which version of SketchUp you have. Um, some, there's an icon right up here on the toolbar, and others, you go over here to the Window menu, come down here to 3D Warehouse, and just click. And um, what I've decided uh, I need here is I need a little bookshelf and uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and search the uh, 3d warehouse for a bookshelf now I want something that I can uh, hang on the wall I don't want a freestanding bookcase um, I'm not exactly certain which bookcase I want but I'll know the kind of design when I find it. I don't want anything freestanding. I want it to go up on the wall. I think I said that. And uh, just something simple. Not so simple that it's boring, but not so difficult to cut out um, that it would be a rotten first project for this demonstration. Um, just something with enough curves on it to make interesting. And um, but yet realistic and reasonable to do and as you can see there are a lot a lot of bookshelves and bookcases and I think this one right here will do uh, so I'll select that and yeah we've got a few curves here some nice brackets and a nice shelf I think this one will do nicely so I'll go ahead and download it I want to load it directly into the model and there we go. So let's go ahead and take it over here and place it. And I can see right now that it's backwards. So it's just one of those things that I'm going to do for me. I'm going to go ahead and spin this around. So we'll start on this. Oh, nope, nope, nope. I got the wrong one. And uh, not the move. I want the rotate. Hello. Let's start here and flip it around. Now I'll move it and cursor left to, or excuse me, cursor right to constrain it to that axis. All right. Now, I'm going to start off by saying that uh, this was never my intention to uh, make this a tutorial on how to use SketchUp. So I'm going to assume that you already know how to use SketchUp. Um, if not, if you're new to it, there are literally thousands of tutorials online. Uh, and some of the best tutorials that I have seen were done by Jay Bates over on his channel. And I'll put a link to his channel in the description box below. So um, go over there. And you might have to scroll back through his videos to find them. But he's got an excellent series of videos on how to use SketchUp. So... Um, first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to figure out what we have here. We Obviously, we have a model. Great. Uh, what else do we have? You see, um, most SketchUp users create their models um, never imagining that they're ever going to be cut out and built in the real world. Most of these models are made to uh, exist in a 3D environment online whether that be within SketchUp or some other application. And now, there are exceptions to that rule, of course. There always are. But uh, my reason for bringing it up is every modeler is a little bit different and every SketchUp user is a little bit different. Now, obviously, we don't know what was in the mind of the person who created this model. So we don't know how they created it. Uh, some folks just save everything as one single component while other people will make for instance both of these brackets separate components along with the shelf itself well now we don't know what it is we do know that it's either a component or a group because when we select it it turns blue so I'm gonna go ahead and right click on it and here all I see is edit component 
So that tells me that this is a single component, but now is that made up of separate components? And no. When I click on various surfaces, I get that dotted surface that tells me that each one of these is a collection of surfaces. He did not make individual components. So I'm going to go ahead and click outside of it, select it again, right click, and then click on explode. What that does is that removes that component status and just makes it a uh, collection of surfaces again. So now what I need to do is I need to create separate components. So I'm going to go ahead and come over this way, get a pretty much straight on shot, and I'm going to start up above to the left and above this shelf bracket, drag a box around to the right and towards the bottom. And what that does is that means everything that was in that within that box is now selected. And I'm just orbiting it around here to make sure that that is the case. And yes, that is the case. So I will type on my keyboard G to create a component. And the important part is this check mark right here, replace selection with component. Now up here you can give it a name, write a description. I generally don't do that. I just go ahead and click create. Now that is its own separate component. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing over here on the left side, again above and to the left, dragging down below, orbit around to make sure I've got it all and nothing else, and it appears to be the case, so I'll type G, check marks in place, create. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and, uh, holding down control, select both of those, take the move icon, go back to this back corner, click, and with my pressing down on the cursor left button on my keyboard, I'm going to drag both of those components out front just to get them out there away from it so that I have room around the shelf itself. Go back, grab the select tool, and again going from left to right, select that shelf, everything is selected, Yes, it is. G for component. Check marks in the right place. Create. All right, now we have three separate components. I'm going to go ahead and spin around to the back here because I want to flip these two over onto their sides so that we can see the top view. And I'll go ahead and grab my rotate tool again. And I'm going to start on this corner here. Click, move over to this corner, click, and flip. 90 degrees on the blue axis. Come over here to this one, do the same thing, click, click, flip 90 degrees on the blue axis, go back to select. Okay, now I'll move this one starting at this corner here, click, hit my cursor up button, and drag that up, and then immediately move my. Uh, cursor over here onto the surface of the shelf and click. What that does is that uh, references the location off of that shelf. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. Grab that corner, start moving, hit my cursor up button, and go like so. Now with, go back to my select tool, hold down control, select both, move, and I'll hold down the cursor left button to constrain it to the green axis. And that looks better. Okay, now I'm going to go to Camera, Standard Views, Top, then Zoom My Extents, which moves everything into the center of the, of the screen. And we look good. Uh, we are now ready to go ahead and export this into DXF. One thing I do want to do now uh, is I want to go ahead and use Solid Inspector just to check each one of my components. So I'll select all three of them, click on the Solid Inspector, and it says there are no errors. Everything is shiny. I tell you, I don't know why I like that, but I do. There is one problem, and that is if you take a look, well, 
I messed that up. Let's go back to my standard top view. If you take a look, what you're looking at here is the top surface of each of these components. But if you look over here, you can see the edge. We don't want to be able to see that edge because that's going to translate over into our DXF file and it could possibly throw us off. So we want to go back over here to camera and right now we're looking at it in perspective view. We want to look at it as a parallel projection. Now if you watch these brackets when I click on parallel projection you'll see that those edges disappear. Now we're looking straight down and the top surface and the bottom surface are both parallel, flat, and in plane. It's not giving us any kind of a perspective. So with that going, we can go ahead and select all three components. Then we'll come over here to File, Export to DXF or STL. Our export unit will be, for me, in inches. I'll click OK. Now here we have a few off, uh, options. Um, generally speaking, for a DXF file, we want to use either polylines or lines. Now how do you know when to use which which? Well, for any kind of a drawing or model that does not have any curves, if every single one of your lines is a straight line, then using lines is fine. But since we have curves both in the shelf brackets and in the shelf itself, We'll go ahead and we'll use polylines. I'll click that, click OK, and now it's asking me to export the DXF. So I've navigated to the correct folder and I want to call this a book shelf and save. Now it's telling me 114 faces are exported, zero lines exported, 324 objects are, are ignored. That's perfectly fine. That's about what I expected. The 114 faces that were exported are all of the lines that create the shapes. The 324 objects that were ignored is everything along the sides, all of the polylines around the face of the each one of these brackets that makes all the curves, etc. So let me click over here and do like so. All of this along here is what was ignored. And same here and everything else down here. What it just did was it exported a outline of all of these parts. And that DXF file is now ready to be opened up and used in any other program that uses DXF. So that's it. That's how I use SketchUp to go online, download a model, check that model, create components if need be, use Solid Inspector to inspect all of those components, to make sure that they are solid objects and usable for our situation and then export them to DXF file. That's it's as easy as that. So I'd like to say thank you very much for watching. If you got anything out of this video at all please give me a thumbs up down below. But whether you give me a thumbs up or not again thank you for watching and y'all take care.